Suskers, you, you, you're big comic fans. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. Big, yes, sir. Big, big film fans. Let's just take that, what Eric said, and let's just put something into perspective. I'm going to just twist a couple of things around. Let's take the character of Batman and Superman. They've been around for 85 years. Mm-hmm. Batman, still unbelievably popular Batman, right? Yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. Spider Man's been around for 60 plus years. He's massively, fat. massively popular. How can they be around for 60 years if they never found a modern audience? See, I think that's what these companies don't understand. Knowing that Peter Parker has these things about him that don't change, just like wrestling. I think it's why people love it because it's timeless. Peter Parker is always going to show you what it's like to be broke as shit and overcome adversity. And uh, for me, he's one of the most timeless characters of all time. Superman in a different way. Obviously, he's not. He can do a lot more than Peter Parker, but he has this goodness about him. For a while, you used to know that the undertaker would win at wrestlemania you didn't even need to watch it you just knew it was gonna happen and uh not just the wrestlemania of it but you could see that these things that everybody loved uh they started to go for shock value i think it was spider-man 700 when they killed peter and they put doc ock in his body and then he proceeded to have sex with his wife which was Obviously a rape, but uh, Mary Jane would have known. Mary Jane, Mary Jane know. couldn't tell there was an old German <clears throat> man and her husband, but Miguel O'Hara with a mask on talks to Peter for five seconds and knows it's not him. That's how you know the writer doesn't have a good relationship with their wife. That's how you know they're not really married <clears throat> and nobody knows them. But it, it's you've never stuck it in this hole before, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> But the destruction of these characters, like there's no, there's nothing broken about Superman. No. There's nothing broken about Batman. There's nothing broken about Spider-Man. And to say, oh, we need to change it. Yeah, give them more interesting stories. Give them new things to overcome. But don't change who they are. That's what, that's also like religion. I can go into a church anywhere in the world and I, the Bible will be the same depending on the church. And it's a nice thing. It's a nice thing that you feel welcome. It's like a ritual. And this is an invitation, changing these characters from who their core line is. So many people don't even know how to keep up. Like the canon used to matter. And like oh, none of the things that I memorized about Marvel matters no, anymore. No gives a shit. And you guys wrote for them, right? right? So you, yes, are, you yeah, already know. I wrote for them. Yeah. yeah. It, it's weird because like we would say things and this is one of the things that I love working at the Ripiverse. Eric, you know everything and you're the <laughs> boss and you shouldn't. I'm so used to the people that hired me having no idea what the fuck they've hired me to do and having to re-remind them about, oh, we're doing this because of this, or do you remember in this back issue, this happened, so I kind of want to reference it. And it's it's so discouraging when you go into something that you admire and you're like, oh my God, I would love to work for this company. And you start talking about their own IP and they don't care. And you're like, fuck, man. Like If they don't care, care, who, who is meant to? I know. I remember when I was working for the WWE and they're like, we don't know if wrestlers are good in movies. And I was like, if any fucking company has to think wrestlers are good to put in movies, it fucking should be you guys, right? Like, shouldn't you like wrestling? Shouldn't you like comic books? Horror movie. I can't believe how many times we've been hired for horror movies and they don't like horror. And I'm like, why are you here? And it comes as fight to get this product done but when you're working with somebody who wants to make the same thing like at the rip reverse they're like let's do this and oh i know eric you're such a good editor there are some things that you did in yara one i know everyone like you're the yeah. high, high, most highest criticized man in comics but you are so involved and you're so smart and you do changes and it always blows me away because i'm like the boss knows what's happening at work like i'm so you just don't have that entertainment you usually have to say hey as per the last five things and remember when you hired me we decided this girl would do this can we still do that and they're like what who'd you hire i don't want that anymore but you're always like yeah let's do this with this character because it's happening this in this book and let's get chuck involved because of this thing and i'm like wow it's like a real fucking company it's like we give a shit about the stories and it's so basic you care okay. so much boss anytime self and i have come on to an existing property like see no evil 2 the first thing we do is we read all the message boards yeah and we read every positive and negative thing the fans have said we did that with natasha as well yeah, we did and everyone said get her the fuck out of the red room and don't make her date someone i want to see that she is playing nice when she's on the avengers that she's way more deadly and dangerous I would have loved in the Black Aquito movie if she left the Avengers and she 
changed her posture and started speaking in a Russian accent. They're like, who's this? A little usual suspects. Yeah. yeah. And mm. she's like, this is not who I am. I'm not like fucking California girl for you. Yeah. Who yeah. you date me? Like, yeah. fuck off. I, would be I yeah. killed him Pearson before I was 10 years old. Now, come on. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just love it. I think that's what, uh, I, I think it's laziness in modern creators right now. Like, they intentionally don't hire fans. Marvel openly says they don't hire fans. Yeah. And they say that it's a benefit to not hire a fan because they're not going by the source material. They're doing new stuff. But they don't realize yeah. the claiming oh. niche. They're saying no to the rest of the audience. Is like, I like Batman. I'm not Batman, but I love that fantasy. It's the same reason I like the Punisher. Sometimes I want to see evil beating the shit out of it until it's bloody and crying. That's what I want to see sometimes. And I mean, like, I don't have to be bruce to enjoy that yeah it's a part no. of the power fantasy right like it'd be cool. uh, imagine taking a franchise character let's say forget the word franchise let's take a character imagine taking batman superman black widow yaira isom whichever one it may be put it into the hands of a studio and saying do you know everything that made this character popular <laughs> that got it a fan base that made it that, that had decades upon decades of, of generational love for it. Get rid of well, all of that. Remove it. Yeah. Oh, that's a pants Don't read Yara so fast. <laughs> I oh, to, oh, it's over in a fucking burka. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. It, it, it's just it, this mentality <laughs> of, of thinking. And I, I just want to go back to something you were talking about with the studio because I actually found it really interesting. Um, is it bureaucracy or is it neglect or is it what is it that that makes the studio like you said if, you, if you're involved in a horror film and, and they're saying oh we don't like horror uh or if you see you know i'm in a superhero you, okay well, how do you want me to, to to work this one well i don't i don't know i don't know anything about superheroes or wrestlers what what is it is, is it over bureaucracy is it over is it over managed what is the problem there I think it's ego and insecurity. Yeah. Uh, the greatest producers and creatives I have, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Some yeah. people have to say something just to justify their jobs. Yeah. And unfortunately, it happens a lot in the film industry where you'll have something great and everyone will be super passionate about it. But this this one producer, this one creative or financer didn't they wanted them something they said to to change the direction they want to save the project just so they can go in there and be like hey that i did that yeah they can't sit there and be like hey you know those directors the creators the actors everyone that we hired i did that yeah once in a while you'll get someone who'll watch an entire edit of a movie and be like it's great no notes and they're like what do you mean no notes and like the movie works why would i why would I change something just so I could hear the sound of my voice? It's definitely insecurity. And I think even though they never admit it, there's a tiny little voice inside them saying, you don't belong here. <laughs> for that sure. will definitely foster some insecurities for sure. Yeah. I think Max hears that on a daily basis. Well, Max, right, uh, right, uh, right after pay the bill. <laughs> Thanks for watching right now. The Ripperverse is in the middle of our latest campaign, Yaira Number no. 1, which was written by the Saskas. Head over to Ripperverse.com, pre-order and check out our first live action trailer and the latest Ripperverse Studios production. Y'all be easy.